Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another screencast by yours truly Mr. Sano for Earth Science. Uh, if you're looking at the title here and you seem a little confused like we've done this before, we have done this before. Um, but I just want to go back into land and sea breezes because now we have a couple uh, we have some different terminology that we can use and apply it to our land and sea breezes. So this is like land and sea breezes revisited or a remix if you want to call it that of our land and sea breezes okay remember our land and sea breezes basically occurred because of the differences in specific heat of the water and of the land our land has a very low specific heat so it heats up and cools down very rapidly and our water has a higher specific heat so it takes a longer time to heat up and a longer time to cool down so it's due to these differences in specific heat that allow for land and sea breezes to occur on this daily basis. This unequal, like we said, the unequal heating is going to cause our land and sea breezes. Here's a, just a re once again, sea breezes revisited. You can take the notes. They are gonna be a little bit different from the first time we took notes on land and sea breezes. So I would just double check them. If you wanna recopy them all, that's not a big deal. If you wanna look for where they're different and just copy those parts, you're more than welcome to. But remember this unequal heating due to the differences in specific heat. The land has a low specific heat. So that means it's, it's gonna heat up quickly, warm quickly. And when it warms quickly, it warms up the air above it. Warm air, therefore it becomes less dense. It rises and it will have a low pressure. And what happens around a low pressure system where we have rising air, clouds form, remember, during the day. See over here, the water, high specific heat. So that means it's gonna warm slowly. So this will be generally cooler. So this would be cool air. Cool air is more dense sinks so we have a high pressure and there's our downward movement of air so just a little difference here we're talking about our air pressure associated with our land and sea breezes and remember high pressure here low pressure here our winds move from high to low remember we have the exact opposite scenario of this occurring at night to form our land breeze Here's our land breeze right here. Nice little diagram. We're gonna to add to this one also. So a breeze from the land. So here it is, it's a beach moving towards the ocean. So we have, remember the specific heats have not changed. Here we have a low specific heat. So that means this is gonna cool off quickly. Cools quickly. So that means we have cool air here more dense it sinks and we also have a high pressure on this side well all the way in the ocean the exact opposite we still have our high specific heat which means this cools slowly so that means this air is going to be warm compared to the air over here so this is going to be warm air less dense it rises so this is our low pressure, and we could have possible cloud formation in this region. Once again, winds go from high to low, and the breezes or the winds are named from where they come from. So since it comes from the beach, it is known as a land breeze. So this is just our land and sea breezes revisited because now we know about high and low pressure systems and how winds move. Okay, just like we just said, our winds go from high to low pressure. During the day, we have our sea breeze. And on the bottom picture at night, we have our land breeze. Okay, once again, just another diagram showing. This one just adds little temperatures in it, shows the, um, it shows the pressures. And once again, talks about night and day, our sea and land breezes. This one I'll leave up to you guys to figure out what it is. Take a look at it. And that is it. So it was a quick little look into land and sea breezes again. 
You should have the notes for it. Just if you want to copy them again, you're more than welcome to. The more times you copy them, probably will help you remember. The diagrams are key. They are important. You will see them. They will show up on a test or a quiz. There's no doubt about that. But enough of that. The next time we meet, we'll talk about air masses. And we're nearing the end of our meteorology unit. Have a good one. Take care and good night.